Lab 7, Genetics of Organisms, involves using living organisms to create crosses and determine the type of cross based on evidence collected from F1 and F2 generations of the organism. For the purposes of ease and accurate information, a simulation will be used that allows us to collect the same information had this lab been done live. In this case, the organism used is the Drosophila melanogaster, a type of fruit fly. The reason the Drosophila makes an excellent organism to perform these crosses on is its simple food requirements, relatively short maturation period of about 12 days, ability to, to produce large amount of offspring and its many hereditary mutations that can be easily distinguished and observed. The setup of the lab requires a vial of wild type flies, a number of vials with experimental flies, a petri dish, and a basic microscope. Important in the analysis of the lab is the sexing of the wild type flies. The differences between male and female wild type are clearly shown in this picture. Males tend to have a rounder abdomen with a darker tip and contain sex combs on the forelimbs. Females have a more pointed abdomen with light pigmentation and no sex combs on their forelimbs. Though the lab manual directs you to anesthetize the flies by chewing them, a safer and more efficient method is to knock them out temporarily with CO2. The Alka-Seltzer tablet produces enough CO2 to keep the flies down for about a minute. Not long enough for you to... An observation. So a long anesthetizer called Flynap is used to knock out flies for several hours. After a Flynap is used, the flies can be observed safely and moved quickly. When comfortable with determining the sex of flies and anesthesiizing them, a vial with experimental flies will contain the crosses we observed. Once you receive the vials, the adult flies will already have mated and the larvae for the F1 generation will be developing. We removed the adult flies and observed any differences in these adult flies to the wild type flies we worked with before. These adults were then disposed of and their offspring, the F1 generation, were placed in another vial. A week later, the F1 generation was checked for any mutations and then disposed of. The offspring of the F1 generation, the F2 generation, were taken and placed in another vial again. After a week passed, the F2 generation, now adults, was observed and any mutations were again noted. We started this lab using normal flies with no mutations, meaning the F1 generation's parents had normal characteristics. As seen on this graph, there were 19 females and 21 males in the F1 generation, and none had any mutations. The F2 generation, on the other hand, had 32 normal flies and 8 flies with sepia-colored eyes. That rhymes. For the sepia-colored flies, 5 were male and 3 were female. These results illustrate that the original parent cross was a sex-linked mode of inheritance. Since there were mutants in the F2 generation, but none in the F1 generation, the fact that the recessive sepia colored gene did not show up for two generations, but then turned up in the third generation, suggests that the seemingly normal females in the parental cross were actually carriers of the recessive allele for sepia eyes. Obviously, a cross between the, a normal male and a carrier female would yield no female mutants. 
and has a, ch has a 25 percent chance of yielding a male mutant. Therefore, it is perfectly logical that there were no mutant males in the F1 generation. However, the F1 generation certainly had many females that were carriers of the recessive gene, and these females passed the genes onto their offspring. Consequently, the F2 generation yielded eight mutant flies. This is the chi-square, a test used to determine whether a set of data is a close enough fit to predicted or theoretical data. The O variable is the observed number of offspring. The E variable is the expected number of offspring. After plugging in those values for this particular set of results, the value for the chi-square is less than the critical value. Our data is hypothetically correct. This lab demonstrated the importance of recessive sex-linked traits, since they can often lay hidden for generations and then suddenly appear, like the commies. The increase in carriers in a generation increases the chances of there being mutants with that particular trait.